All right, today um, we're going to start the process of actually trying to put this car together with stuff that's going to be staying in place. And the first thing I got to do with that is uh, we got to pull the drivetrain back out. Uh, the this motor needs a new rear main and with the Mustang 2 front end you can't get the oil pan off with the motor in the car so we're going to yank it out put a rear main in it uh, while we got it out we're going to get the uh, get the floor shifter removed now that we've got a functional column shift in the car so that should be fun um, there's a few bits we got to get out of the way before we can actually get the motor removed the, the headers being one of them and so we'll get those pulled it's going to be it's one of those days where you just kind of gotta start doing the little stuff the button up stuff i think we've solved <laughs> i think we've solved most of our problems our headaches per se and that most stuff's gonna fit so now we got to start going through and doing all the button up stuff so it can stay together uh, i did want to work on the inner fenders today but uh i don't have them so the i well if you've watched any of the videos on this car you know that we had inner fenders but the inner fenders that we had which are up there uh, those inner fenders are going to be going on the car behind me because we cut those to work with the fender wall headers that we were potentially going to be running on this car. And since we're not going to be running the fender wall headers anymore, I don't want to run inner fenders that are cut for fender wall headers, especially when I can use them on a different car. And uh, so I ordered up another set of inner fenders not the same ones no. um, absolutely not the same ones because those were a nightmare to get to fit so i went with a different one and uh, well it might shock you but it they were even cheaper um so we'll see that might kind of turn out to bite me in the uh, the backside that i went with even cheaper parts but uh hopefully they fit better they at least the way they look in the At least the way they look in the, the photos of the description, the inner fenders that I ordered should not have the same problems as the inner fenders we got before. Um, but we will see. Since I don't have them we yet, they didn't make it. Uh, shipping says they're supposed to be here on Monday and it's Saturday. So we won't be touching those this weekend. But I figure before we start closing everything up on the front end, because once I get the inner fenders, I do want to uh, actually start bolting things together to stay. We need to get some of this stuff taken care of under hood and the drivetrain and whatnot so that we don't have to pull anything apart. And uh, I think we've got everything now to put this car together, I hope. But we will see. I think I just need to get this header pulled and then the motor mount bolts and the drivetrain should come out uh, the trans cross members are already out transmission sitting on trans jack so yeah good progress it is supposed to get really stupid hot today um, which doesn't vote well for keeping our sanity if you didn't notice, the uh, these headers, they, they fit really good and just come in and out from the top. So, I, I recommend them for a Mustang 2 style front end. They are a very good fitting header. Um, I'll put a link for them down in the, the description if you're interested in checking those out. They are from Speedway and it's a small block Chevy header for the Speedway G-Comp front end, um, which is not what we have. We just have a Heights Mustang 2 front end, but they fit really good and clear the steering without issue. So, I recommend them. One, 
motor mount bolt, which we'll be replacing. That was on the replace list too, the motor mount bolts. And two motor mount bolts. Two. couple more times. Well, I mean, we're only going to have to repeat this same process on the other car so that we can do the rear main on that motor because I'm pretty sure it needs a rear main as well. And when I get my car. Yeah. So what are we, what are we looking for in your car? Yes, it, everything in here, she doesn't take claim to. The, uh, Everything, even the one that's up in the garage. The, yeah, the, the current fleet is, uh, technically it's my fleet, minus the truck. The, uh, the truck is uh, Paige's dad's truck, so, um, which hopefully we start working on sometime soon. We're waiting on the, uh, the old man to supply some of the parts he's got hiding in storage so we can start putting that one together. So why don't, why don't you tell them what you're looking for? Who knows? Maybe uh, maybe one of them on there will have something for you. What? Well, what do you mean? What what car, what car do you want? That's that's what I mean. Just, just the camera so you can hold it. So, when this all started. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There you go, that's a little easier. So, when this all started with, you know, me meeting Cole, us getting together, us getting our first Nova, then we got into another Nova, and then another one, and it just kind of trickled down. Um, I was very into the 62s. 62s were was the model, the year um, that I really liked, I really wanted to stick with. Cole wanted a fleet. So I told Cole I wanted all 62 fleets. Obviously they're not mine, they are his, but I wanted to keep them all 62s. Um, well, we didn't stick with 62s. Cole got a 62. A 63 and a 64. No, not a 64. No, sorry. A 62, a 63, and a 65. Uh, you know, he, he totally just messed with my whole big 62 fleet. Uh, so, Cole wants me to get my own, and we've been looking around. He would love for me to start racing with him. Um, so, we're going to be a uh, racing couple um so i'm very intrigued in it but i personally would like a 62 hardtop nova are those easy to find no but fingers crossed i find one um if it's a post i'll stick with that too we were kind of thinking about turning the four-door into a race car for me, but kind of don't want to do that. So, and it's, a and it's a 63, it's not a 62. I mean, I would, I will I know all of you are going to be like, oh, she's so spoiled and everything, whatever. I don't care. I want a 62, 63, 64, 65 is not what I want. Um, so, but if it comes down to it and it's a really good deal, I will settle with a 63, 64, 65. 
Um, but anything above that, I really don't, I'm not into the body style. I don't really like it going into the 70s. I don't like them. So I'm trying to stick with the 62. So we are on the hunt to get the wifey her own race car so we can start racing together. So that's my whole little spiel right there. But we'll get back to what the man's doing over here before he hurts what, himself. What's the other thing that you want right now? What do you mean the other thing I want right now? That's directly driven by the YouTube channel. Oh. <laughs> Oh yes, um, and please, if you are watching these videos and you are liking what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button. Um, it gets really, really hot in the shop. Sometimes you don't see me in videos because I don't do well in heat that well. I do get like heat rash and stuff, so I bomb you out. Know about your I heat know, rash. I know. You don't want to know about that. I know it's a little awkward, but that is kind of what you know. You that's why you don't see me a couple times, and that's when you see Cole beating sweat down his face. Yeah, I'm not dealing with that whatsoever. Um, I know you can call me spoiled, whatever, but that's just what it is. But if you like this, if you want to see more of me with my hubby working on vehicles getting out there doing things please subscribe because once we hit 5,000 subscribers i'm gonna make the man put ac in the shop so please that is that is our goal he made me i i couldn't do a thousand subscribers because he said we have to hit a a, a good point so 5,000 subscribers so please hit the button um, to get me AC in the shop um, but that is our goal <laughs> oh yes if you want if you want to torture me I mean make my, my yeah life. Mm -hmm. oh crap, 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 crap oh no he's running oh Oh, you were gonna make a mess. I got it. Oh, you were gonna make a mess. I got it. I didn't think there was any oil in there. Whew. I guess I should pull the little drain cap off. Yeah, you might not want to leave that. Yeah. There we go. Um, where was I? Oh, something, subscribers. Some, some, the subscribers. And, you know, if you want to make ruining life, your life. It, it, yes. Oh man, there's. Is That's this a. Full, is this full of oil? <gasps> is it? Did I not drain the pan? Oh, you know what? I'm pretty sure I drained the pan, but I this filter didn't run, so the filter's probably full of oil. Mm. Bet you the pan's empty. We can check. That's no biggie. Um, which this is going to make a little bit of a mess anyway. Yeah, the pan's empty. Because it's going to drip oil once the pan comes off. But we'll try and catch the filter. You know Cole likes making messes. Yeah. You know, but yes. Okay, if all of our people, our subscribers, would like to ruin your life. Oh, um, not, I, did I say ruin? I meant make my life, you know, amazing and better so my wife can spend all her loving time out here in the shop with me. Bull honky. Well, apparently, I. You get are a lot such of a good drugs. liar. What? Yeah. No. I'm, I'm trying, uh, this is, there we go. Look at that, look at that, all in the pan. I did it, no, oh, this was. This is fresh oil. Good Waste stuff. oil. This, this was Waste. fresh, this had to have been fresh, but it smells a little gassy. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, there's a little bit of a gas smell to it. Uh, Are you sure your nose is a little wonky? No. Yeah. A little, little gassy, there's right? That, the, yeah, there's a little gas in there. I mean, we were, this motor was probably running a little rich. Either it was running a little rich, or uh, the rings are getting tired on it. But uh, we're not going to worry about that. We'll worry about the tune-up when we get it back together and running, and the rings are going to be what the rings are going to be. We do, I do have new valve seals for it, uh, which we probably will do at some point, but we'll get it running first before we worry about valve seals, because I don't feel like doing that right now. 
So, uh, from here, I need to drop the pan. It looks like it's leaking out right there. So two, that's not good. Yeah, it's, this had a either a rear main seal or an oil pan leak back here at the back of the block. Um, or possibly both. So we're going to address that. Uh, being a two-piece rear main motor, uh, you can do the rear main without taking the transmission off. So I don't plan to take the transmission off, um, which might make it a little bit more annoying to do, but whatever, we'll make it work. So uh, we'll be back with you in a few minutes. We're gonna try and keep the camera from getting too hot while we're out here working today. Um, I'll get the pan dropped out of here and ready to do the rear main and we'll catch up with you at some point around there. Yeah, because right now in the shop, it's, what time is it? Uh, it's like 10 o'clock, I think. It's like 10 o'clock and this is, this. I'm going to show you the shop temperature right now. It is 86.1 and climbing. <laughs> I think it was 85 a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, it was 85 a couple of minutes ago. So it's, it's climbing up there. It's actually supposed to get like 90 something today, but with the humidity, it's going to feel like 100 and something. So yeah, can't have the, can't have the camera overheat today. <laughs> That's not going to be no, no bueno. All right. What? You're so cute. Okay, I'm cutting that. Alright, come on, come on in. So, one of the things that uh, with a small block oil pan, and I will gladly take the blame for this because I'm the one who put this pan on here. Um, one of the things you want to do, which I was trying to wait to pull that down, but the fact that it just fell down, um, is in the corners right here and same corner back here where this gasket which this has one of the newer style one piece gaskets, but in these corners, you gotta put a little bit of silicone or you're going to leak oil. It's guaranteed you'll leak oil if you don't silicone those corners. And as you can see, there is uh, no high temp sealant silicone in those corners on either the front or the rear, which means I blew it. And this is probably what our oil leak is. It's probably not the rear main. Um, I'll take a, another look up in there with the flashlight and see if I can see any wet around the actual rear main. But uh, this is probably our oil leak on the back of this block, not, hopefully not the rear main. If that's the case, I'm not gonna mess with it because there's no need to uh, crack the main caps if this is all good. Because I know that the, the oil pump's doing what it's supposed to, the pickup's where it needs to be, all that stuff's good. We just had an oil leak that needed to be addressed and. Uh, it's probably this, lack of silicone due to uh, user error. Um, but, and then the other thing that I was gonna grab while we're here, I'll clean that, is we'll look in this pan and uh, at the oil residual that's still in here, which uh, kind of grimy in the bottom, that's kind of weird, but uh, I mean, other than being dirty, there is absolutely no glitter of any sort. This oil, it may not have been fresh. This might've been in here a little while, but uh, there's no glitter in it. There's definitely, definitely a little bit of fuel, but it's actually not that bad. Not as bad as I thought it was. Um, so that being the case, actually, you know, I know, I think I know why that's thick like that. I think I added a, uh, an additive in there, um, but anyway, being that there's no glitter in here is a really good thing. That means that uh, we don't have any uh, metal material going through the system, which means our bearings are probably good and all that stuff, all the happy stuff that you wanna find. You don't wanna find any glitter in there because that's at the motors. So that's where we're at. Uh, this might be easier than I was originally expecting. Uh, we might not be doing a rear main. We might just be resealing the pan and stuffing this guy back in there. Anyway, um, that's where we're at for an update. Um, I'll, if we find, if I find something else in here that we need to do, if we do have to do a rear main, we'll uh, go down that road. Otherwise, uh, we'll catch up with you in the process of putting this all back together.
moving on. What you doing? Uh, playing with fishing line. I'm not fishing line. Yeah, this is fishing line. What? So what I'm what I'm doing, and considering I'm doing this on the cherry picker with plenty of room under the pan, it's probably not really necessary for this particular situation. But uh, if you're doing an oil pan in a car, for instance, underneath, if you have room to do that, and you have to wiggle the pan around under the cross member and whatnot, uh, it can be a struggle sometimes to keep your gasket in place while you're, uh, while you're doing it. So I'm taking a little bit of fishing line, just little pieces of fishing line, and I'm tying a couple of the bolt holes to the pan between well tying basically tying the pan gasket to the pan so that it stays where it needs to be while I get the pan hung that way I'm not having to fight with getting the pan gasket aligned up, up underneath so now our pan gasket will stay I've got it tied in four spots it'll stay where it needs to while we uh, get it hung up underneath so then I'm going to take a little bit of, I'm using uh, Permatex Ultra Black, um, but basically any high temp sealant will do uh, any of the, the stuff that's meant for this type of thing. And we're gonna take just a, a little dab of that and we're gonna put it in each of the corners. It doesn't need a whole lot, just, a, just enough to seal up the corner. Once the pan gasket goes in there, it'll give that all a good squish. We'll do that on all four corners. <coughs> and the transmission hitting stuff. I did already uh, clean all the rail off. The oil pan's all been cleaned out. Got rid of all the old yuck. Nice and clean. Uh, while I was at it, uh, one thing that, uh, some, some history on this motor. So this motor I got nine years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's about nine yeah. years ago this month, actually. Yeah. It's almost exactly nine years ago I got this motor. Um, I had a motor built for that red car back behind me. And let's just say things went a little bit sideways with that motor. It was built for, we were getting the car together before our wedding, actually. And, uh, well, it did, things didn't exactly work out so hot with that motor I had built for the car, and it killed itself um, about uh, six weeks before we got married, which is almost exactly, almost nine, nine years ago, uh, right now and uh, it left me in a scramble with very little budget and needing a motor and not having enough time to have the motor that killed itself redone again because one i didn't have the budget to have it redone and two there was no way the engine builder was going to get it done in the time that we it was going to be needed so we went to market I went to Marketplace and started searching and found this motor, which was nearly identical to what I had built for the car. And it was unknown if it was gonna be a runner. The guy who had it had never run it. He got it from a buddy of his that uh, it was claimed a runner and everything looked decent on it as far as what you could tell without opening it up. And I have, never actually opened it up beyond what you see right now. The heads have never been off. The Well, the intake's been off, uh, which you've probably seen in other videos because it had a factory um, cast iron four barrel intake with it. And it wasn't bolted on when I got it, but I don't know what cam's in it. Um, and then as far as the bottom end, uh, I'm gonna clean the gunk off of my hand now. As far as the bottom end goes, 
uh, what I know is what I can see. And, and uh, I actually learned a little bit more today about it than I knew previously. Um, it is a three, true 327. Uh, the, the crank is a 4577 casting crank, which is a steel forged small journal crank. So we know it's a small journal 327. And the, what I learned today, poking around, looking up inside here, is that uh, I, I was able to I see one of the casting numbers on the inside of one of the pistons. And I looked that up a little bit ago, and it's got uh, standard bore, so it's a virgin bore block with uh, flat tops, um, which means this is probably one of the high performance versions of a factory 327. It's got 462 camel hump heads on it. Um, essentially, this is probably, if I had to guess without actually pulling the, uh, the date codes on stuff to get the, the specifics as to uh, which motor options this was, this is probably a 350 horse 327. Um, it does have a hydraulic flat tappet in it, not a, a solid lifter, which means it's not the the high horsepower uh, 375 horse combination, mm -hmm. which eh, that would be cool, but I can live without it, especially for the car we're putting it in. And uh, I, I don't know what the cam casting is, but it looks good when you look up in there. And if we look, let me see if we can get the camera angle on it. You'll have to, you'll have to get a little bit tricky here. Um, where, where's this one? There we go. This one's, I don't know if we can see it in the camera. Um, I don't know if we can, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. But you can actually, in some of the bores in the bottom where the pistons are up, you can still see cross hatching, um, which means this motor's very young in its mileage life, despite being probably 50 years old, this motor's probably a really good motor, uh, as, and, uh, which is great. I, I like finding stuff like that. Everything inside is real, real good. There's no slop in anything. Everything's real happy. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, that's a little bit of history on the motor. I, we got, what, I think it was 600 bucks. I think I paid 600 bucks for this motor. And um, it's probably the best $600 motor I have ever bought. And we're going to uh, slam the pan back on it and send it on down the road because everything checks out real nice. Anyway, back to where this all started, this, uh, this segment. Uh, we took and tied our pan gasket on, which like I said, for doing right here in the air, probably wasn't critical, but if you're doing this under a car, it'll really help with keeping your pan in place, or keeping your gasket in place, I should say, uh, while you're getting your pan all up where it needs to be. And hopefully I can get this all in here decent. One bolt there. See if I can't get to the opposite corner. One thing I do recommend for a, uh, a cherry picker is if you if you look up close at the top end where the hook just above the, the hook. Oh, that, your that your, swivel. Your janky? It's not janky. That swivel's genius. Oh, that's what you mean on the chain? Yeah. I'm talking about your this, janky, like, you know. Oh, no, no, ignore that, ignore that. <laughs> this guy right here. That, I highly recommend putting on your cherry picker. Um, they, uh, it makes it much easier to manage your motor and move it around when it's hanging because then you can, it'll swivel and you're not fighting a chain trying to, uh, you know, untwist or twist on you. And just can turn it. And there we go. We got two bolts started at opposite ends. Um, but yeah, and then once you've got bolts started and your gasket's happy, you know, you can go through and start all the bolts adjacent to where you have it tied. For instance, we'll start this one. And now the gasket pinned in both of those spots. Then you just come back and you snip your little fishing line, or I, uh, the other one that I've seen 
that works well and is easy to cut is uh, floss. You can put a little bit of floss, but you, you know, snip that, get that out of the way, and then you put the bolt in. Everything stays nice and happy and in place. So, um, like I said, doing it right here on the stand, it probably wasn't necessary because everything's accessible. There's not stuff in the way. But if you're having to fight a crop with a cross member and weasel the pan up in, um, that can really help with uh, keeping things together. Anyway, I'm going to finish getting the pan bolted up, and then we'll be on to uh, stuff in the drivetrain back in the car. What are you doing? You're supposed to stop your movie before you start filming. No. Yes. It makes things better. What are you doing? Oh, well, we're getting ready to put the motor in because... No, you're not. Yeah, because I already got the shifter out of the car. What else do you need to get out of, or put in the car? And the shifter cable's out of the car. Okay, what do you need to put in the car? The motor. No. Yeah, the motor's got to go in. Well, if you put the motor in, what do you use to get the motor to go? When you're in the driver's seat? My Flintstone feet. Okay, well, you might need a gas pedal. Are you, are you hinting at something? I'm, are you beating around the bush? I mean, if, I mean, if you want a gas pedal, you can put it in after you put the motor in, but that's just going to yes. make it more complicated. Yes, you could have you could have rephrased and been like, "Hey, you wanted me to remind you to put the gas pedal in no. before you put the motor in." No, no, I want to give you I want to give you shit because you were going to put the motor in and make it more difficult for you to put the I'm, pedal I'm in. You didn't just let me forget. What are you filming? Are, are you are you just leisuring about or are you filming? I'm getting hot. Well. Then you, then you better finish filming this clip and start begging for AC. Because it's not going to get cool. Whatever. Whatever. No, I should have let you just put it in there. I should have just let you put it in there and been like, oh. You need to find the bolts. Don't, don't forget, out. they're probably on top of your car with all the other bolts that are on top of the wagon. They might be up there. Yeah, all those bags that you had me put together for you, so yeah, you wouldn't they, lose can I anything. Use, can I clearly use them? Let's see, nope, that's push forward, ramps cross fender, motor mounts, hood, trans cooler, left fender, battery tray, headers. It's not one of those. Um, no, they, it is actually good that we're, that the gas pedal is going to go in before the motor, because this is a pain in the neck to put in. Uh, honey hinge, door support, right finger, they're not up there. Um, but the pedal is a pain in the neck to put in once the motor's in because it goes behind the driver's side head. So it's doable with the motor in, it's just not easy. I gotta find the bolts. Are you just gonna film everything from right there? Yeah. That's being awfully lazy. That doesn't make good I should have, you know what? I should have just let you put the motor in. I should have just let you put the motor in. Make good content. And gas pedal, look, look, we got them. Gas pedal bolts, they're right there. Weird, and a bag I labeled. I told you I was using the bolts. I used the bags. That's why I had you do them. All right, let's get the gas pedal stuffed in. Then we can get the motor in. And move forward. We're we're always moving forward. Sometimes it looks like we're going backwards, but we're always moving always forward. Always looks like we're going backwards. No, it does not. That's not the right wrench. Need a three eighths. How hot is it in here now? So has it, has it made it to 95? Everybody's wondering. <sighs> it is. Let me extend this so you guys can see it. It is almost 93 degrees in the shop. Only 93? Oh, it's not too hot yet. But the humidity makes everything super sticky. So, I'm not happy. Oh, goodness. So the gas pedal is just secured to the firewall. It's just a through pivot that bolts into the firewall right here. And the driver's side head will be 
right here in front of it. That's why it's got this bend in it, so that it reaches up over the head and where it mounts. So with the motor out, this is super easy to get to with the motor in. It's a uh, royal pain. I should have made it complicated for you. It would not have been very nice since I asked you to uh, remind me. I'm forgetful. No, I'm forgetful. That's why I asked you to remind me. And I reminded you. I know. But you did it in a really uh, <laughs> not so nice way. Like hey. you, it's like you were trying to make me sound dumb. Hey. You were, weren't you? Hey. You were out to get me. <laughs> I was out to get you. I knew it. I knew it. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this next part we've seen on a couple of different times on the channel, so uh, we won't make you stick around to watch me fiddle the motor. Oh, before we stuff it in, even though this one has no oil in the transmission, where's the thingamajig I got? Oh! We'll find out if it fits. Oh, the thing that you're going to show everybody that you got? Yeah, we're trying, trying to make less messes around it. What the heck are you going to do with it? Now you got to figure it's, out. It's not going to do it. any good since it disappeared. Um, Is it in a little black box? A brown box? No, you can see. Oh, I found it. Okay. I found it. It's over here on the table. Okay. So, I uh, after making, I don't know how many transmission fluid messes and uh, knowing that I did not have any yokes around to stuff in the transmissions I uh, I did a little quick online searching of the uh, Scamazon site and found this little doohickey made by Powerbuilt which is supposed to be a transmission plug um, I think Yeah, you stick it in just like that, and uh, it's not hollow all the way through. It's only hollow to about the middle. It's got a divider in it um, for fitting different transmissions. But then when you go full tilt with your setup, pulling it in and out, you don't dump ATF everywhere. You only end up spilling the, you know, whatever little bit might be right in this thing once everything's back in. Oh, yeah? Yeah, much less of a mess. Now, granted, this one wasn't going to make a mess anyways because we already dumped it all out all over the floor and I haven't put anything back in it yet. So, but uh, hopefully it, we don't have more transmission messes because I got the doohickey, the honky donkey two hickey to uh, keep the ATF from not going all over the floor. It's still not going to do anything for the coolant messes though. Yeah, you're, you're ready to I don't, I don't, I don't know messes. what to do about those other than accept them. So, uh, with that, we're gonna get, I'm gonna get this stuffed in the car and uh, we'll move on with uh, whatever comes after that. Um, things I did do, sorry, I know I just said we were gonna cut it off and I'm moving on to something else already. Uh, things, other things I did while I had it out, uh, we got, like, like you saw, we got the oil pan on and mounted and sealed back up. Hopefully we uh, don't have a big mess this time. Um, the starter, I went ahead and installed the starter. Uh, I'm also probably before, I don't know, sometime around when this video comes out or after or before this video comes out, I'm putting out a video, um, just a real short video about the starter or starters in general for small block Chevys. Um, that some of you might find interesting because I have a whole bunch of them and you might be wondering what this starter is and why I picked it. So you're going to have to go over to watch that video, which um, I'll put a link in the description. I'll put that video up before this one and there'll be a link to the starter video. Um, it's only like five minutes long, I think, but it'll be in the description. You can check out this starter and get some good information on the other starters because it's like four different types of starters you can use for... Uh, small block Chevys and you'll know exactly why I chose this guy which doesn't look like anything special but uh, it's a pretty pretty nice piece um, I also installed the fuel pump so we don't have to fight with that down there and it'll also make sure I put the motor mount bolt in the right way and if you come around oh hold on let me pull this back I'll just I'll spin the motor so the camera lady doesn't have to go anywhere I can move go anywhere Oh, 
So you let my new little piece get banged. Oh my goodness. Goodness. All right. Uh, the other bit that's installed is the alternator. You probably shouldn't walk under that. That's probably no. not a good idea. Whatever. Um, I installed the alternator. I'm using a low mount bracket that mounts where a lot of people mount their power steering. This car is not going to have any power steering, so I found an alternator bracket that works in this location. It tucks the alternator nice and low down by the side of the motor. Um, this should work for us. We'll find out for sure once it's down in the chassis if it'll actually work all the way and not give us any issues. But I think this is going to work without a problem. Um, and then we'll have a real simple, clean belt, belt set up around there. And we'll be able to hide all our alternator wiring and stuff down low so you won't see it hanging off an alternator that's up here in freaking no man's land or one that's hanging out over here off this water pump. I don't, I don't like alternators. I think they're ugly, so I try and hide them down low. Anyway, um, the last bit that was installed was the, pan. the Well, we already talked about that no. pan. That's not a pan. That's a, that's, well, that's a, a cover. Uh, yeah, it's a dust cover is yeah, what they actually call it. you put the dust it. cover on. Um, but it's not really on-on. Zip Whoa, bed. whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to point out stuff like that. Oh, that's why I'm here. Um, I installed the, the dust cover for the 700R4 because, uh, well, it needed to go on there and it's easiest to get to when the motor's out and hanging up nice and high. But uh, as you probably heard the wife say, uh, it's, uh, it's held on with zip ties. Um, I didn't have any bolts for it. Uh, 700 R4s use all metric hardware, and I don't have diddly for metric hardware, so I just zip tied it on there. Um, if we remember, by if we, I'm just gonna say me because she's just out to make me not remember things or screw things up. I'm pretty sure she's against me in this project because she doesn't like station wagons. Um, I'll get hardware to properly bolt that in, which putting hardware in place of the zip ties won't be that big of a deal under the car. Um, shouldn't or shouldn't be anyway. So that's the, the last piece that was installed. This is now ready to go in. We'll get it stuffed in, bolted up, and uh, see where we go from there. Yeah. Okay, well, um, ta da! It. Uh, Deja vu, it doesn't look different. <laughs> it basically is exactly where we started today. Um, okay. If you look close, you can notice a few things that are a little bit different, like we have the alternator. Yay! Um, and it does, it does fit, but there's not as much adjustment as I would like, so finding belts for that might be an issue. Um, I don't know. That may or may not have to change, but we're not quite at that point yet, so we got to move on with other stuff. Um, the one thing that was a bit of a hassle putting this back in um, and is a not really a knock just kind of a known typical with long tube headers is your starter can't be installed when you're installing the header and i put the starter on the motor when it was out dropped it in here and then the header wouldn't go down back down through the hole so i had to drop the starter off it put the header on and then put the starter back on not that big of a deal. It's definitely there. Okay, so something just happened to the video. The camera, the GoPro decided that it wanted to cut us off. Um, hopefully it got us to the starter. Um, while I was saying though, if it didn't get it, is that uh, the big old honking old behemoth original OEM starter from the 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever. It's probably the only starter that won't fit with these headers. Just about any of your other mini starters and mini torque starters, the ones that are clockable, or even that uh, late model OEM starter that I'm using. Um, plenty of clearance for that, no issues. Um, we did, you know, no issues with the fuel pump clearance. One thing I will note, if you've got a small block Chevy and you're putting it in something, and you don't have any of your accessories on when you're putting it in, you wanna make sure 
if you're using clamshell mounts anyway, make sure you put your motor mount bolts in from the back going forward. There's why, a, why is that? Why? Well, because if you want to put them in from the front going back, you have to remove your fuel pump and you have to remove a power steering pump, or in my case, an alternator to get the bolt in or worst case, if you're pulling it out for any reason or you have to just replace a motor mount, which to replace a motor mount, you don't have to remove a motor from a vehicle. You just have to take the weight off of it so you can get the motor mount out. If you put that bolt in from the front going back, you have to take your accessory drive apart or take your fuel pump off to get the motor mount bolt out. So if you put it in from the back, that's not the case, which it's a different problem with this setup. Um, but typically, Typically, you want your motor mount bolts going in from the, the back forwards. It's easier to get them out. But uh, in this case, it really doesn't matter. It's kind of a pain either way because the headers tuck in. With the bolts going in from the back, you have to remove the headers to get the bolt out. With the bolts going in from the front, you have to remove the fuel pump and or alternator um, to get the bolts out. So I was in a jam either way. But most of the time, if you put the bolts in from the back, you can get them out without taking anything else apart. Um, Transcross members in, transmissions bolted up. The Everything that's in now is staying in. Um, from here, we'll move on to, oh, and the steering is hooked up. The headers are actually bolted in proper with gaskets. All the bolts are in, they're all tightened up. Um, our steering clearance is, you know, it's rock solid. There's plenty of room for our steering shaft passing our headers, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, we're, we're bolting things together to keep them together at this point. Uh, depending on when the new inner fenders get here, things I will get started on if they get delayed for whatever reason is I'll put the, uh, the master cylinder on. We'll start working on the brakes and uh, we can start gasketing the top end. I need to change this intake out for the one that we're gonna run on this motor. Um, valve gaskets, all that sort of stuff. And you know, we'll slowly chipping at it. Once we get the inner fenders, we'll be able to do inner fenders and core support. And then we'll be able to put the skins on and do the wiring because I really don't wanna start the wiring until the sheet metal's on because that's where you run all your wiring. Um, and then there's this little, bracket that I, I don't know what it's for, but we might make use of it, we might not. TVB. So, that's what we got done today. Yada. It looks just like it did when we started, but we did get the uh, quite a bit of the stuff done. The oil pan's been resealed. The bunch of the accessories are on. Um, yeah. But from here on, we're moving forward. This was forward. It just, oh, and the gas pedal's in. Yay! Um, like well, I said, as, meant, is as you can see, as you can see now, show, show. you can you can see now why this would be a, a pain to to do with the motor in, even with the valve cover off. You can see those bolts. One of them's down here on the bottom side of the bracket, down there is where one of those bolts is. So you can see why that would be a pain in the neck to do with the motor in. I have done it. It is doable, but way easier with the motor out. What I meant was that we're putting things together so that everything can get put together on the front end and I'll we'll start moving forward to where we can drive it. That's what we've been doing the whole time. Well, it doesn't seem like it. I promise, that's what it's been the whole time. Well, it is 95 but degrees in the shop. Did we hit 95 by Yes. We are really? at 95 degrees. 95? on the dock yes and it's lunchtime and it's lunchtime and, so uh, cole needs to feed me if you if you want to buy a b m shifter for a four speed you know know who to call <laughs> actually you don't have my number but you can email if you want i guess but that's going to do it for this round of uh screwing around i'm going to go eat some lunch and figure out what's going on later in the day we'll see you guys on the next one